Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be doing a problem from the 2011 Asian Pacific Math Olympiad problem number two. I suggest we try this task on the Torx problem out for a minimum of 15 minutes, ideally 30-ish to 45, not more than an hour and a half. Maybe if you need to write it down, maybe think about two hours at most, but really around 30-ish minutes. If you'd like to go along with us, give this a go for the next five to 10 minutes. And now let's begin. So let's see, we have five points. They're on a plane such that no free line, the same straight line. Okay, so some five points like this. Say, say this configuration. And we must determine the, what's it called? The highest value, the minimum value of the angles can get. Okay, so what we're saying is among all these pairs of angles that are formed between these five points, there is some triplet that has the smallest angle. And now for this triplet, or actually I think it's going to be this triplet right here. And we're looking to say, what is the highest possible value this thing can be? Now, the first idea is, okay, well, five points. Well, maybe let's look at three points. What is the, if we look at three points, what is the highest value the smallest angle can get? And I think the answer is 60. The highest value the smallest angle can be is like when we have an equilateral triangle, and that's just that. That's how we can get 60. Because otherwise, we have a triangle, angles alpha, beta, gamma, they sum to 180. The smallest one then is less than or equal to 60. We've proved then the angles are most 60. Now, if we have four points, what are we going to do then? Well, if we have, we can either have like three points and one point that's inside them, and then it's it's actually not 60, or is it 60? Maybe I'm thinking, is it 60, or is it smaller than 60? Is it maybe half of 60? Because now we have one, two, three, four. We have these six angles, right? And they sum up to 180. So one of them is going to be less than or equal to 180 over six, which is 30. But if we look at maybe a square, Instead, like four points that one isn't inside the other, we're going to have the biggest angle, the, the smallest angle, its value will be 45. And I think we can even go ahead and say like, well, case by case, if it's a triangle with a point, if we can have a triangle with a point inside, then we have this situation where the smallest angle is going to be the most sturdy, and if not, then we're going to have this situation. We're going to have all of these angles. We sum them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight angles. They sum up to 360. So one angle is at most 360 over eight, which is 45. And this is what I'm doing. We've not, we haven't come to the five points, but this is a common trick or a rule of thumb is to go ahead and say, I don't get what the problem is asking me nor how I'll prove it. So let me then instead work, instead of uh, working with five points, let me work with three, with four, and then I'll go to five. And now with this, I invite you to pause for the next 15 minutes or so and try to work with the five points. And here's what, what we have. This is also called a, actually I'll say the name later, of what this is called, but we can do the same similar analysis as here. We can either have a situation where we have three points and two on the inside, right? In which case we have all of these angles. Huh? How do we actually, yeah, we can make call all of these angles what they are. We're going to have one, two, three times three, which is nine, nine angles. They sum up to 180. So that means that one of them is going to be at most 20. That's in this situation. In the situation where we have some four points with one point inside, we're going to have 
how many angles here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And actually, no, not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's going to give us actually 360. But I can also connect these two diagonals and have an even better estimate because now I have more angles which are different. Now I have one, two, three here, one, two, three here, 12. They sum up to 106, they sum up to 360, 12 angles. That gives me at most, I'm going to have 360 over 12, the smallest angle is at most 30 degrees. And finally, I can have the situation where I have five points, like this. And then if I draw the star here, I have one, two, three times five. I have 15 angles, they sum up to 540. So one of the angles is five, at most 540 over 15, which is equal to, say, what is this? This is, if I multiply both sides by two, a hundred and a thousand eighty over 30, cancel the zeros, 108 over three is equal to uh, 36. And then I get that, and I'll get 36 if this is a regular pentagon because I'll get all these angles are equal in a regular pentagon. And so in this case by case analysis, we've shown that the biggest value, what's it called, the maximum possible value that the minimum value of any angle can get is going to be 36. Here it's at most 30, and in this case it's at most 30, in this case it's at most, what did I say, 180 over and most 20. And then this is how we'd prove the problem. Now, totally valid solution. You might be thinking, wait a second, how do you know that these are your only, that you only have these three cases, right? That might be a question you have. And the answer is, well, no, these are my only three cases because I'm using a, this is called a convex hull. And it's a useful sort of thing to know when you have points in a plane, is when you have any number of points in a plane, a convex hull is, is a subset of these points such that when you sort of connect them and make a convex n gon of those, of say, you have n points in your subset of these k points, and you want this, when you connect these points, you have a convex n gon in which, in whose, in inside of which are is every single other point. Actually, it's inside of which or in the boundary, but given no free acrolinear, it means inside of which is every single other point. And how you really construct an angon is you can go and say, I think this is just like a side lesson to be learned here while we're de dealing with this problem. How you construct this is say you have all these points right here, right? And how you'd go is like, you would say, put these points in an xy plane and then take the point that is furthest to the left, which means it has its, what's this value? This, its x value is the smallest one possible. And you just like get that point. It can be one or two points. If it's two points, then those are the first two points in your convex hull. If it's not, say you have two points. And now what you're doing is you're taking this line through the point with the higher value and then you start rotating it rotating this line so you're rotating here until you hit another point from the what's it called from your set from your set of points and then you know there you don't have any points on this side right here you also know you don't have any points here but now the way you've been rotating this you know we also there are no points on the outside here and then you take this line, you start rotating, rotating from here, and you go room, and you get to this next point. And now you know there are no points here. And you continue this process. The process has to end because what's called you're going to rotate every like you're going to rotate by 360 degrees at some point. And so when you rotate that, you're going to get you're going to need to get to this point because if you were to get to another point, say inside here 
then you would have a contradiction because at every point, what is to the, to the actually, how would I say, maybe to the left, if, I, if this line has a direction as well, what is to the left of this line, there's nothing to the left of this line whenever we're rotating this. And so you have a contradiction that there's something to the left of it. But this thing is called a convex hull. And it's a thing that's somewhat used, sometimes used in these problems when you have endpoints in a plane, because when you have it, you can then, you then have some more levels of control with how you're going to be doing stuff, whether you can put a line between them, or I don't know, where you can count them. Sometimes the number of points in a convex hull helps. In this case, we just have a case-by-case -case analysis, which says, is our convex hull a triangle, a quad, or a pentagon, right? And these three cases we do separately, and we find out that the answer is 36. Now, this finishes up this nice little problem from the APMO 2011. And I like it because it shows, it's, mind you, it's a difficult problem when you think about how am I ever going to prove this? And there's another way to think about it, which is to say, huh, I'm going to go over, I'm going to pick one point, I'm going to fix it. And then I'll look at all the angles, the other points form with this one. And then how many angles will I get? I'll get, and actually it's tricky. It's not, it's actually not that simple. I mean, actually, huh. Here's a maybe a simple, a simple ish type of thing. You can connect all these lines, right? They form an angle. And what you can do is then you can pick say a point here and you'll say, I take, I'll take all of these lines that I'm going to for any two pairs of points. And I'll just take a line parallel to it and ride it through this point. So I'll take a line parallel to this through this point, parallel to this, it's going to be this. Well, then I'm going to have all the lines which are parallel to it. Now, when you take those parallel lines, I think there's a decent solution as well. The thing that gets preserved is the angles. <laughs> the angles between two lines gets preserved. And so you have that the angle here. How many pairs of points do you have? You have five choose two. You have 10 points. So the, because the angles will be preserved, here the sum of all the angles here between all the lines is 360. So one of the angles is going to be at most 360 over 10, because you have different 10 different angles that the lines are forming. And so what's it called? Because actually you have 10 different angles that the lines are forming. I think I'm glossing over this for a second here. There are five choose two lines, that is 10. And then those 10 lines, two lines form one, two, four angles, three lines form eight angles, 10 lines will form 12 angles. Oh, so I'm actually not getting a correct estimate. I need to figure out a way with this to get it to some 10 lines. If you figure out a way to do this, let me know. But I thought, for a second, I thought there was a solution that we could do with this. It's an interesting idea. In this case, looks like it doesn't work. I, I'm just curious what the cases are where it's not working. Maybe it's a line that needs to not be in here. Or maybe we're looking out at pairs of lines. No, we're not looking at pairs of lines. We're looking at lines next to each other. And you have 10 lines. How many angles are formed? Not a simple problem. Not a simple problem by any stretch of the imagination when you're trying to do it like this. If you figure out a way how to, do let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for problem solving.